Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we are going to talk briefly on Dr. Andrew Holness, Dr. Andrew Michael Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica, on his recent achievement, a doctorate, a PhD in public policy, in law and public policy, I think, right, from Northeastern University in Boston. That's my understanding that he obtained a PhD degree in public, in law and public policy. And, uh, you know, I was briefly here on the university's website and I would like to know what are the requirements for getting that PhD in law and public policy. I would think that Andrew Holness, you know, because of his experience in government and crafting public policy, he would have gotten to that program because my understanding is that, you know, according to what the Jamaican website here has for him on the nationaljamaicalibrary.gov, he has, you know, he earned his bachelor's degree in, uh, that's a BSc degree, a bachelor's of science degree in management studies at the University of the West Indies, and also a master of science degree in development of studies at the University of the West Indies. Both degrees were done at the University of the West Indies. I was wondering what, you know, does management have to do with law and public policy? Well, law particularly, because he would have garnered a lot of experience in public policy, having been prime minister for so many years and having functioned and played a very pivotal role in government uh, for so many years um, at his level, right, uh, right now. So I would think that he would give him his, you know, credit. He would have some amount of experience in crafting and formulating public policy. So he would be able to qualify to enter that degree. I understand, though, that, you know, Andrew Honus started this degree during the pandemic. And I'm saying, wow, that's interesting. So while he locked down the country and allowed many Jamaicans to have suffered, their businesses were closed and the economy was shattered, was devastated by the effects of this lockdown sort of policy, he was able to travel. And well, perhaps he did his classes online and was able to complete his coursework, right, during the pandemic. So that was good for him. <laughs> While many Jamaica was suffering, he was doing his homework and studying, <laughs> pursuing his PhD studies. You know, one of the things that I, I find very interesting about Jamaica is that these things are not, are never told. Everything is done in secrecy. And this might be his private life, but he is running. He is definitely a public servant. He is the prime minister of Jamaica and Jamaicans should have been aware that he was pursuing a PhD because PhD studies, I would think, requires some amount of academic rigor. And it's not that he's just going to just read and a couple of articles. He has to read books. He has to read many scholastic articles in preparation for class and also to uh, defend his thesis, his dissertation. And we're just learning about that now. Having done that, you know, at what expense did Mr. Holness pursue PhD studies whilst he was running an economy that is in the doldrums? We don't know. Now, we have a society in which crime and violence also is a very, very, um, it, it's, it's really a challenging topic, a challenging matter, something very difficult for Andrew Holness to, uh, to deal with, right? And yet still he had the time to invest in pursuing PhD studies. And I'm not suggesting now that Mr. Holness does not have the intellectual abilities, the intellectual capacities to pursue a PhD. Of course he does. My argument is that where did he find that time? And who was running the country when he was away or when he was reading, when he was studying? Who was really running the country? And if he were running the country whilst he was busily engaged to studying or pursuing PhD studies, what mental frame of mind was he in? Was he able really to concentrate on, when I say concentrate, I mean concentrate fully on running the country, on governing the governance of, of Jamaica? 
Now, I understand that is, let's, let's look at the news here just to make sure that we have some of the facts, you know, to substantiate what I'm suggesting here on this uh, channel, this program. Now, we have here, this is coming from the Caribbean Nation Weekly.com, and it says that Jamaica's PM, Andrew Honus, earns PhD in law and policy. I The word law there continues to bother me because I, Andrew Honus has no sort of background in the legal profession. But, you know, what do I know? I have not yet really analyzed the program at Northeastern University in terms of what does this PhD in law and public policy entail? You know, this whole matter of PhDs and masters and stuff like that is a grand, you know, um, fraud. And I understand that a lot of what is being taught is really nothing much. If you can talk about, you know, public justice and social justice and, you know, gender equality, all you need to do is to know, to be able to tailor your argument and your thesis around these robotic sort of expressions. I, I understand what it's all about. Now, we have this article was written by Cherie, uh, Cherie K. McLeod. It says Jamaica's Prime Minister, Andrew Polness, has officially earned a Doctor of Philosophy, a PhD degree in law and policy, making him the first sitting Jamaican president to achieve such a feat while in office. The news was confirmed by Nationwide News. Polness pursued his doctoral studies at Northeastern University in Boston, with his thesis focusing on the impact of U.S. gun laws on violence in Jamaican society. So it's interesting that he was actually studying the impact of guns flowing into Jamaica. And why couldn't he develop some policies during that time to stem that sort of traffic, to stem the flow of guns going into Jamaica? I don't know. His research explored the factors contributing to the rise of violence, including loose firearm regulations and active participation in the illegal arms trade, all about just theory and the inability to craft a practical plan, to design a plan, to devise a plan or policy to stem the tide of the flow of guns in Jamaica. But perhaps it's just to know, you know, to just be able to articulate about it and to, because that's what Jamaica is all about. Right? Or leaders are about just telling us what is happening and they don't know the how to solve the problem. If they can tell us the, the what, but the why and the how, which requires a lot of critical thinking, they're not able to, to do. So that's what he's going to tell you now. He knows, he understands the whole criminal network and the flow of guns into Jamaica from the United States. But he's not going to be able, he doesn't have the capacity to craft policies to stem that tide. So our crime and violence continues on abated. Now, it suggests here, let me show you when he began, because I think I read it and I wanted to be clear and I wanted to be sure of diffusing facts here and not to just speculate. According to the newspaper, the prime minister confirmed that he started his studies shortly after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, which began in December 2019. Hmm. The COVID pandemic began in 2019, December 2019? I didn't know that. I thought we first heard about it sometimes in January and then lockdowns you know, came about in March. But it seemed to me that he started his career you know, sometimes maybe in January, I don't know what's what what's what is what. Something doesn't seem right here, right? But according to the new source, he started his degree, that's the PhD studies, sometime about in December 2019. He referred to it as a lifelong achievement. This doctorate adds to a growing list of academic accolades, solidifying his commitment to both education and public service. This latest milestone follows Onus's honorary doctoral degree of human letters, which was conferred on him by Delaware State University in May. Onus also delivered the commencement address to the graduates, uh, marking the first time a head of government had done so in the university's 132 year history. That is interesting. Right. So we have here and, you know, I suggest here that Prime Minister Holness's academic journey began at St. Catherine High School, where he served as both the head boy of the school and valedictorian. 
He later earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Management Studies and a Master of Science degree in Development Studies, cementing his lifelong dedication to learning. So um, I don't know. It's very interesting. We, while we applaud him, but we wonder who was running the country while he was busily pursuing his studies. Now, we have a lot of challenges in Jamaica, a lot of unsolved challenges, ongoing challenges, challenges that have been brewing for many years, for decades that we have not been able to solve. And we have sent Andrew Fones to, um, to pursue PhD studies. Remember now that that's, this would have happened before, it seems. He's saying that he began his studies in December 2019, which I found time to be very suspicious, be highly suspicious. And then he won the election in 2020, right? September 2020. Shouldn't we have known that he was about to pursue PhD studies? Because Jamaicans were sending him on the mandate to fix the country, to fix the problems, the intractable problems that bedevil the country. That's why, that's why we sent him there. And we know the problems are insurmountable. Right? And we have some challenges that it seems to me that it is very difficult to devise solutions to solving those problems. But Andrew Polis had the time to pursue a PhD studies. Now we know that his friend, Dr. Nigel Clark, is on his way to the IMF. So I wonder if Andrew Holness also has plans to go somewhere. Perhaps he also has a job, but before he gets that job, he would have had to get his PhD. Maybe that is on the agenda. Maybe that was why he went to pursue that PhD studies, apart from his own personal gratification and personal goals. It, I think that could be because, you know, we understand that he is lauding his administration. Andrew Holness is lauding his administration and, and his ministers. He's saying that several of his ministers have been called and have been sought by international organizations who desire that they work there. So I'm wondering if Andrew Holness is vying for a position and it required that he had a PhD, particularly in law and public policy. I have always had that impression of Andrew Holness that he is after, after his tenure would have ended in Jamaica, that he is putting in place some international responsibility. He's moving on to exploring jobs at the international at the global level with these multilateral international institutions. I think that he's heading somewhere, whether it's you know, be it the United Nations or the OAS. He might just end up at the, the International Monetary Fund too. We don't know with his dear friend Dr. Nigel Clark. But the, based on what I see here on the Northeastern University website, I think the cost of the program is 102,000 K, um, 110.3 K. I am not sure if that is yearly, I would think, because the PhD studies are very expensive. And so it's interesting that Andrew Holness coming from a poor country, would have been able to pay that amount of money. And where that, did that money come from? Who paid for that degree? Did he get a scholarship? Right? Was Did he go there free of cost? Did the United Nations pay for him? Did he get a scholarship through uh, the, his friend in Canada? What's his name? Um, Justin Trudeau? We don't know. But the fact is that he now has a PhD, which I'm happy again for his personal achievement. But my question is at what, at whose expense, at what or whose expense has Andrew Michael Holness achieved this PhD? And why was, why was it kept in secret? So our ministers are doing things and we don't know what they're doing. We don't know if they're 
spending, in investing enough time in running the country, in governing the country. We don't know because they can do whatever they want to do. And having done so, they can come to us and we laud them and we cheer them on whilst the economy is in a very sad state of affairs, right? But that is how things are done in Jamaica, right? In obscurity. And we love that. But I just thought of sharing this news with you, this special news with you. And I would like to know, what do you think about it? The fact that, of course, you should be happy for your prime minister that he has earned. This is not an ordinary doctorate. This is not an honorary doctorate. This is an earned PhD that he invested time and effort into completing. And a PhD, even though it's talking about social justice and, you know, and the nonsense, he would have had to do some reading. And he would have had to write a dissertation and to defend it. Where did Andrew Follis find all of that time, given the challenges in Jamaica? I don't know. Perhaps you can tell me. Maybe he's a superman and he knows how to manage his time well. But based on what we're seeing in Jamaica, we can see that the country is being governed poorly. So <laughs> there's no doubt that Andrew Holness sacrificed the governance of Jamaica for obtaining a PhD. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and do share and do subscribe. Looking forward to seeing you in another video. May you have a fantastic day. See you in the next one. Ciao.